Hi all, I have another very, very exciting game to show you from TSAC. This is Leela playing against Stockfish. It's in the amazing Sicilian Dragon opening, which has at times been condemned. For example, Bobby Fischer didn't think much of the Sicilian Dragon. He he uh, joked in jest, I believe, you know, just use the h file sack, sack and mate, for example. So let's see in this game, Leela playing white, the interpretation of these engines of the Sicilian Dragon. So the opening book given... Uh, we go into uh, the main Yugoslav attack variation, which is opposite side castling. Very, very exciting scene set. So bishop g7, f3, black castles king side, white prepares the castle queen side. Uh, bishop c4 here. We have queen a5, white castles queen side. Bishop d7, bishop b3. Uh, so this looks... Uh, as though actually this this is the first move out of book actually 11 bishop b3 the first 10 moves there rule book so Leela chose bishop b3 we have now Stockfish choosing rook fc8 working out rook fc8 we have h4 95 this still seems like well trodden territory here king b1 and now uh, this has been seen before in high level over the board chess h5 bishop g5 the, the dragon theory goes deep here stockfish plays b5 there is a game of nakamura one of my favorite super grandmasters and he played rook takes c3 here and won a brilliant game against uh Na Naritsky, pardon me, who's uh, who was very high rate GM 2633. Three. This was in the St. Louis tournament of 2015. Uh, that game with this exchange sack, we've actually covered on this channel, I believe. Uh, so Nakamura um, getting a very, very good compensation for sacrificing the exchange, targeting later, I, I believe, that C3 pawn, as we can see here. The C3 pawn gets targeted, and um, yeah, Black gets a great game there. And in fact, the White King comes under heavy uh, attack there, threatening chatmate. So that's winning material. Um, if White has to try and escape that, it's it's not very uh, nice. So um, great game there from Nakamura. That was with with um, the exchange sack. Rook takes c3 here. But in this game, we see Stockfish playing b5. And I felt there's a very, very interesting uh, strategic perspective on this game. And I have to mention, uh, you know, one of my top correspondence players at Chess World, Seri Evans, uh, has has uh, given the opinion in opposite side Sicilian defence games, often it's structural issues like, you know, past pawns which decide the issue, not actually the brutality of the king's side attack. Here, I, I would like you to make note of the structure in Black's, you know, Black's pawn structure, the number of pawn islands, how fragmented in particular the Black pawns uh, are becoming during the evolution of this game, and the implications of that for past pawns, and how ripe those pawns could be for falling off like ripe apples later, perhaps. So let's have a look in particular at the fragmentational issues as we go through this game now. So Leela chooses knight d5, and we have queen takes d2, because it was hitting the queen. We have now uh, rook takes d2, not knight takes e7 uh, check or knight f6 just yet. Um, well, knight f6 e takes and knight e7, uh, you know, king f8, and then black would be winning material in both cases. So white has to take on d2, but um, there's a modest goal here achieved after king f8, which is uh, structural damage. If Black didn't play king f8 here and played knight takes d5, then bishop takes d5, the rook is attacked and e7 is still attacked. So this position uh, is unpleasant for black. Black will be losing a pawn. So king f8 is accepting some structural damage of the knight takes, e takes. It's not just the double pawns, it's the isolated d6 pawn. So take note, these could be undoubled, of course, with f5, but it will still leave this issue of d6. So this is the first example of fragmentation so far in this game. Bishop f4. Is this too modest the goal in this position? a5. We have a3. King g8. The rook goes to d1. Bishop f8. Okay. Bishop f8. The knight goes back to e2. King g7. We have here rook d4. Rook a7. 
bishop d2, knight e5, the rook goes back, rook b8, bishop d5, b4, and it's Stockfish's activity here, maybe trying for an attack, which leads now to another interesting fragmentational issue. Uh, after rook b3, uh, rook a6, bishop e1, it seems as though uh, you know Stockfish commits to this, which allows Leela to be temporarily a pawn down after b3. This is a very, very neat fragmentation trick, this temporary pawn sack. In fact, I've been on the receiving ends of such temporary pawn sacks in my, myself in some over-the-board games. You can see that white pawns are pretty connected here. And the other issue is they can even be even more connected. The potential for connectivity is enhanced if there's an exchange like this. You can see that we'll have a strong, solid pawn chain connected, uh, which um, could be very, very useful if ever bishop e6 later. And meanwhile, this, this pawn is vulnerable here, and the black pawns have been heavily fragmented, uh, fragmented now, here, here, and here. So... Bear this fragmentation in mind now as we watch these next few moves. Knight c6, knight d4, not minding a trade. Knight e7, bishop f2, the king goes back. King a2, f5, so at least trying to double the pawns. c4, f takes, f takes, knight takes d5. This does bring white uh, white's pawns together in one island there. Two islands have gone into one amalgamated so we have a strong uh, pawn chain contrast the black's pawn chain which is pretty fragmented and even in very early versions of Leela even playing against grandmasters even at very fast time controls that seemed to be a Leela trait that quite often if you compared the pawn structure of Leela to her opponent her pawn structure was often more connected and solid uh, more stable blacks they're more like ripe apples here potentially in the future we see here bishop e7, uh, king takes a3, so equal on pawns now, but qualitatively uh, white is slightly better in terms of pawn structure. Black does, you could argue, have the bishop pair, but does this light square bishop do anything? Do, does the bishops work together here? Uh, white's got that nice c6 square if the bishop no longer guards c6. g3, protecting the pawn, releasing f2 of duty, protecting the pawn. Uh, bishop d8, knight b5 not worried about bishop takes b5 here so eyeing d6 here if bishop takes b5 instead uh, we would have a nice position for white where king a4 and a rook coming to c6 later would mean uh, b6 and then a5 is going to be dropping off and that's going to be a big advantage for white so we have the move f6 ignoring this f6 and it seems that stockfish is keen on further voluntary uh, fragmentation after rook f1 king f7 king b2 king g8 bishop d4 uh, stockfish commits to g5 and we're about to see further dismantling of the black pawn structure if king f7 though to be fair it seems as though white can just have a comfortable position uh, potentially waiting around with a comfortable position and this b4 if black does nothing b4 then this kind of thing is going to be really bad uh tactically for black that's not never going to happen against stockfish but uh if it was a, a human game you know that that activity on the a file is quite dangerous here uh so anyway g5 we have rook h1 g takes g takes sorry not g takes rook takes h4 and you can see look at this level of fragmentation for pawn islands this is something kotov had mentioned in his sequel book uh, not think like a grandmaster but uh, play like a grandmaster or is it plan like a grandmaster anyway it was a trilogy of books i recommend you to check out and he did address positional play in his second installment and did talk about things like pawn structure high level things and he did mention you know pawn islands uh, as as are important to assess in a position and yes they just don't lend help to each other uh, one way uh, my, my most recent thinking about protected pieces is that uh, perhaps uh, we often simplify if pieces are protected or not but also uh, there's the notion you know pawns if they're protected as well and if if they're cheaply protected 
it would have to be by fellow pawns, not by pieces. If you have things that are expensively protected in general, uh, then there's often tactical backfires of such protection. You know, if, if it's queens that are having to protect pawns, it, they can often be baited there. And so if you look at this fragmented pawn uh, chain in terms of cheap support, the pawns lack cheap support. It's going to be expensive support with pieces now. Uh, so maybe that's one real downside. It's the expense of a fragmented, uh, fragmented pawn chain. We have here uh, bishop g4 to maintain uh, that pawn chain is more expensive and is, is more of a tactical liability incurred. We have rook h1, king g7, knight a7, king f7, knight c6, we have rook a8, rook e1, bishop d7, knight takes d8. So the bishop had going. And you might think, well, the opposite color bishops, does that offer black salvation here? Because often we say statistically, well, opposite color bishops increase the likelihood of a draw. After bishop b6, yes, um, a5 is under fire and is taken, is swapped. Exchange of prisoners, as Nimzovic might say, the a5 is swapped for g3. But uh, there's a potential, you know, two connected pass pawn scenario here, and three connected pass pawn. If d6 can be eliminated, we'll have simply have three connected pass pawns. Uh, we have bishop c7, and in fact, d6 is is really under fire and is dropping off here. Bishop takes d6. Three connected pass pawns. It seems uh, structurally that White is uh, in much better shape structurally. King c5. Rook e4. So there's the long argument, you know, is chess really about tactics? I've been arguing uh, recently chess might be just about pawns. Pawns are what make chess much more strategic. If you think about it, pawns slow down the game. They make the game far more strategic and less tactical. Without pawns, it would be much more tactical battle from the outset. So they really slow down the game. And, uh, you know, it's been said pawns, uh, uh, Philidor, Andre Philidor saying pawns are like the soul, the soul of chess. And here we see uh, that the white pawns are just more connected and more solid and more supportive of each other. And in fact, the opposite color bishop scenario here uh, favors uh, white's blockade potential is, is, is greater because of these split pawns that the bishop can more conveniently keep an eye on things than this bishop. These pawns are shielding the frontal pawns which are trying to make headway and in fact, Stockfish shedding a pawn there. Yeah, it's it's a very, very tricky uh, position. Uh, so Stockfish is trying to defend against c5 tactically, you know, uh, in some cases, not not quite with rook p8 though. But yeah, it seems as though it's it's giving up with this move, another pawn. Uh, so yeah, it's it's already, it seems a major a disaster this position now. These pawns are just too much. Three connected pass pawns just crashing through, it seems. Uh, so rook d4 supporting d5 there and now b7 these pawns are just crashing through so the interpretation of this sicilian dragon from the leela perspective has just been all around the pawn chain and its fragmentation and here at stockfish it's all over of course uh, leela goes into a known table based position giving up the rook sense of humor there but it's it's a table based win um in fact pardon me after king takes g4 the game actually ended here. Uh, both engines thought it was hopeless. It was it was uh, adjudicated as a win for White. If it continued, then King d6, King g5, c6, Bishop h3. Uh, you know this is crashing through with d7. So we see a remarkable uh, positionally played Sicilian Dragon game here. All about the pawns. All about fragmentation. I think for me the notions of not just unprotected pieces, which many people have, but I think it's nice to qualify that notion in general with the idea of expensively protected pieces or cheaply protected pieces or pawns. And when pawns are together, more connected, they add natural support, cheap support to each other, cheap protection. And that connectedness also increases the chances of powerful past pawns queening with, with very little resistance even in opposite color bishop scenarios so i thought very very interesting uh, positional game at first i wasn't really sure what to make of it because it didn't seem like a normal sicilian dragon game but if you look at it from a structural lens this whole game it seems to make sense that uh, it's all about fragmentation of pawn structure it seems if there's a lesson leela is giving us from this win uh, i hope you got something from it and Okay, if you want to play me for a game, you can indirectly invite me via kingscrusher.tv uh, or bit.ly slash chessworld if you register. 
Uh, there, then I'll be able to invite you for games shortly after. There's a King's Crusher TV Discord chat form you might want to join in, suggest games, etc. It's pretty lively at the moment. And there's those playlists, Leela Chess, Bitly Leela Chess, Bitly Magnus Colson Chess, to check out. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.